Hey guys, welcome back to the Linux Essential Series for Hackers. In this video, we're going to be talking about SSH, uh, how to configure it securely, uh, and then of course we'll talk about uh, you know how to uh, how to securely transfer files with SSH. So let's get started um, first of all with establishing what SSH client and server we're going to be using. So in our case, we want to be uh, we want to be using OpenSSH, which is pretty much the go to uh, the the go to SSH client and server solution. It's completely open source and it's uh, it's one of these uh, you know great services. So again, uh, that that was uh, developed by the BSD team. So um, again, uh, we must first of all understand the uh, the connection type or the connection model uh, with SSH. So SSH is primarily a client server connection model. So that means you need the client software to uh, connect to the uh, to the server software. In our case, we need to install the uh, OpenSSH client service or, or the client package on our client and of course the OpenSSH server package on our server and I'll show you that right now. So I'm currently on my client here which is going to be Ubuntu. Our remote server is going to be one of my Ubuntu servers uh, running on my virtualization server. So what I'll do is I'll say sudo apt uh, apt uh, get install and we say open SSH and we we're looking for the open SSH. If we double tap we can see we're looking for the open SSH client, right? So I'm going to hit enter and uh, I already have this installed. Right now, the OpenSSH client configuration file is found. So if I say cat etc SSH, sorry, SSH, and this is found under, it is the SSH config. The SSHD config file is for the OpenSSH server. So you can see I also have my, uh, my, my public and private keys here as well, but I'll get into that in a second. They, we don't need to complicate this right now. So if I take a look at me at my config uh, file here, uh, this is the client config. Uh, you can see that, um, the options are quite uh, straightforward in regards to what you can enable and disable. So you can specify the port, uh, the protocol, um, and uh, various other bits of uh, you know configurations here. Um, that's not uh, the the in, within the scope of the video, but I just wanted to get to that. So uh, my remote server is running on. Um, it's currently running on an IP of 192.168.1.113. So. Uh, we already have an admin user on that system, so we'll just say admin, and we'll say 192.168.1.113. All right, and I will just enter the password here for the admin user, and there we are. So you can see I'm currently logged in as uh, the admin user. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we need to install uh, the OpenSSH server. So you say oh, apt get install OpenSSH server, and the reason I'm doing this, even though I have it installed already, is just to show you how one would go about doing it, right? Um, so I'd hit install, already installed there. Excellent. All right, all right, all right. Now that we have this, uh, both the pieces of software installed on the client and the server, we can talk about uh, configuring, uh, you know, SSH, right? So pretty much when uh, dealing with the remote server and remote authentication, the first thing you need to do is you need to disable root logins. Uh, because the root uh, the root user account is extremely powerful because it really has no restrictions in regards to what it can do. So that's our first order of business here, and this can be done by modifying. Um, this can be done by modifying the OpenSSH, uh, the OpenSSH uh, configuration file, the OpenSSH server configuration file. So if I say sudo vim etc ssh uh, and we're looking for sshd. Uh, SSHD and we say SSHD config and we hit enter. So you can see this is the OpenBSD OpenSSH SSHD config file, and it tells you it tells you here this is a SSHD server system wide configuration file. So the first thing we want to do is we let's let's take a look at uh, some of the various uh, configurations you can set here. So you can change the default port. This is great for those of you who are who want to set up a honey pot on that exact port, like port 22, and then have SSH run on another port like 2220. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, you can also change the listen address if you want to. Uh, the host key names. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, let's just go down into logging. You can uh, play around with logging here, uh, and I'll talk about logs probably in another video. And here we are. We have uh, we have authentication. All right. So within authentication, you can see we have an option called permit root login, right? And we want to change this to no, right? So from yes to no. Uh, and uh, we we can also play around with the grace uh, the login grace time so we can increase this or decrease it uh, based on the uh, on the time you want to provide 
uh, we can keep uh, strict modes to yes. Uh, in regards to the Mac uh, authentication tries, we can change this to four, although I'll be making a separate video where I'll be showing you how to set up SSH brute force protection. The max uh, sessions uh, I want are going to be three, public key authentication, uh, yes, uh, let's go all the way down now. Um, and we are primarily looking for password authentication. So we'll talk about this when we are going to be setting up SSH keys. So for now, we've uh, we've essentially disabled uh, we've we disabled the root logins. So if I just save the the files here, now when whenever you've made changes to the uh, to the OpenSSH server configuration file, we need to restart uh, the OpenSSH server. So to do this again, we'll use systemd. So we say system. Um, when we say, uh, we say restart sshd, sshd service, remember this is the sshd daemon or the open ssh server and we hit enter. All right, so now uh, pretty much if we just open up a new tab on my client and I try and log into the root user account, I would say ssh root and I would say 192.168.1.113 and I hit enter, right? And I enter the password for the root user and um, you'll see pretty much that we will not be able to do it. So uh, that is pretty much uh, going to block any logins to this uh, to, to this particular account. Now, the other thing we, we want to do is we want to disable or we want to lock uh, the password for the uh, we want to lock the password for the root account. This will in, ensure that even though uh, a, a person or an attacker may have uh, the password, the legitimate password, uh, they can get through it through another user account. Because remember, remember, if if a user gets access to the admin account via SSH, they can easily switch uh, to to the root user account. So we also have to disable, uh, you know, the the password login here, and this will pretty much lock the account unless we have the privileges to actually change the password manually and to unlock it. But it's a great way of uh, of you know uh, protecting yourself from script kiddies. So. Uh, what we can do is we can say um, we can use the password command and we say password uh, L and we specify the account we uh, the, the account whose password we want to lock and we hit enter uh, we need uh, pseudo privileges here so you say sudo hit enter and the password expiry information has changed so we can say sudo password and then status uh, I believe it's status what options can we specify here root uh we hit enter no we do not want to enter a new password so we can just do this one more time yeah so you can see that i can actually change the password but let me lock it um let me see root uh where is the status how do we check the status ah uh, yeah there is a capital s so if we hit enter you can see that the password is now going to be locked now uh the second step would be to disable password authentication and to use ssh keys which is exactly what i'm going to show you right now so uh, that will pretty much ensure that you're protected from brute force attacks because you're, you're pretty much ensuring that you cannot log into this SSH server uh, without an SSH key, right? So uh, what we'll do is uh, we will create a new SSH key here. And this is very, this is very easy to do. So uh, first of all, uh, we, need to, uh, we, we need to establish uh, what user account we're going to be, you know, pretty much be using. We've already locked out the root account. Uh, and once we set up the SSH keys, we'll be pretty much logging into the admin user account. And the, the SSH keys uh, or the SSH key based authentication will only allow us to, to access the admin account. After which we will uh, we will modify the, uh, the OpenSSH server configuration file to disable uh, password authentication. So what we'll do is we'll say, um, SSH uh, keygen, um, keygen, yeah, there we are, uh, TRSA, and we hit enter. Uh, it's going to ask us uh, for, uh, it's going to say generating public private uh, RSA key pair, enter the file in which to save uh, the key. So we'll say uh, home, or we'll just leave it in this directory, hit enter. We can enter a passphrase that's always recommended. I'll enter a passphrase here. That will also add an additional level of security to your SSH key because remember, the SSH private key has to be kept secret. So uh, we can see that the keys have been copied into a home uh, Alexis and SSH directory here. So pretty much what we can do now is uh, if we change our directory into the SSH uh, directory here, you can see that uh, we have the public and private keys right over here. 
So what we need to do now is we need to copy the uh, the public key onto the server. So let me just explain how SSH works really quickly, how uh, the authentication works. So uh, you store your public key on your on the server and you have your private key uh, with you. And the private key is the most important as it's, the, it's, it's pretty much the key that will allow you to authenticate successfully with the server. So you need to keep it secure and backed up in the event you, you lose it, you lose access to the server. That's very important, right? So uh, essentially what, what's going to happen here is your private key is used for encryption, right? So your server, the SSH server will use your, it will uh, it'll send a random string of data to you, the SSH client, uh, after which the SSH client will encrypt that uh, random string of data with the private key and send the encrypted data uh, to the server. The server will then use your public key to decrypt it. And uh, if it then uh, matches and you know, so on and so forth, I'll explain that in a second. So. What we can do now is we need to copy this. Uh, so we say SSH uh, copy ID and uh, we specify uh, the, the server. So we say 192.168.1.113 and we hit enter. It's going to ask you, you can see it's asking for the user Alexis, but we don't want to do this, remember, because we want to use the, uh, the user admin. So we're going to say admin and we're going to hit enter. It's going to ask for admin's password like so. And uh, we've, we, you can see after we've entered the password, it's going to ask us for the, it's going to tell us the number of keys added is one. And we can now try, try logging into the machine with SSH admin and we will essentially not have, uh, we will not need to use passwords. But before we do that, uh, we need to disable password authentication with SSH. So to do this again, we say sudo vim and I'm back on the server now, SSH and we say sshd config and we hit enter and uh, We'll go all the way to the bottom here. Uh, am I in the right configuration file? I believe so. Uh, yes, we are, I believe. Uh, yeah, password authentication right over here. And we will change this to no. So this will essentially disable the ability for you to log in to this, or to, to this remote server via SSH with passwords. So the only way you can log in are going, is going to be through SSH keys. So now I can write changes and exits here and uh, we'll restart the um, the SSH server service or the SSHD service and we hit enter and that's going to restart it for us. All right. So now if we exit, uh, we can essentially say SSH uh, admin at 192.168.1.113 and I hit enter and it's going to ask me for the passphrase for, for the uh, for the private key and we're going to hit unlock. And there we are. We now have access, right? Now, some of you might be saying, well, uh, you have the private key. What if the location is different? So let me just show you this right now. So I'll go into my SSH directory here and uh, let's list all the files. And I'll say I'll move the, um, this is, uh, sorry, sorry about that. Let me just go to my local directory here or I can actually just log out. So CD SSH um, and what I'll do is I'll move the private key. So I'll say move ID RSA to, uh, sorry, to my desktop and I'll hit enter. And now if I try and log in, so I say SSH uh, admin, sorry, uh, state 1.113 and I hit enter. You can see it logs in just fine. However, if, if I didn't know the location, what I would say is for example, let me just exit. I would say, for example, if I was logged in on another computer, I would then say, uh, so again, let me just go onto my desktop here. If I wanted to specify a private key for logging in, I would say SSH I, and then I would say ID RSA, and then I say admin at 192.168.1.113 and enter. And uh, typically what you want to do is you want to ensure that your private key has uh, permissions. Uh, you want to ensure that it can only be read uh, by the current user and not by uh, the group or all other users on the system. So uh, a great precaution. Or a great way of doing this is saying chmod uh, 400 id rsa and that will essentially protect your private key right so that is uh, essentially how to you know set up ssh uh, and how to copy your how to set up key-based authentication how to copy your ssh keys onto the server and uh, we can now talk about you know copying remote files or copying you know files remotely with ssh so again to do this is very simple what i'll do is i'll just create a file, let's say touch test dot uh, txt and I'll cat etsy uh, password and into the test dot txt file here. 
And what, let's say I wanted to copy this test.txt file into the SSH server. Uh, what I would do is I would use the uh, SCP utility. So the SCP uh, is again secure copy. So I would say SCP and then I would specify the file. So I say touch, uh, sorry, uh, test, uh, test.txt and then I would, spe I would specify the credentials. So it's say admin 192.168.1.113. And then I'll specify the location I want to save it in. So I say home admin. Uh, this is on the remote server, by the way. So home, uh, I can't seem to write admin today for some reason. And uh, I'll essentially hit enter. And it, you, you can see that it actually copied quite quickly. So now if we try and log in, so you say SSH um, 113, uh, 113 and I hit enter. And we list the files within the home directory for admin. You can see that we have the test.txt file and if I catch the content here, it's uh, the it's the uh, password information for the uh, for my client uh, right over here, which is running Ubuntu and you can see my user accounts there. So um, that is pretty much how to use SSH, how to set it up, how to set up authentication, how to protect uh, your root user account, how to copy files securely, how to set up key based authentication. So I hope that was comprehensive enough. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions and I'll happy to respond to them and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Mm -hmm.